Welcome to another episode of The Dissection. Today I'm going to start off by asking a simple question, but I think a provocative question. And that question is, do we take teachers seriously? As a society, have we conferred the social markers that give status to the profession and make it desirable? Because often we'll hear leaders and commentators and even people on the street talking about challenges in education, the importance of education. We'll talk about a skills shortage. We'll talk about how we need to produce, you know, more of various skills. But do we actually talk about the teachers enough and what they're going through? Because the reality is there can be no increase in artisans, electricians, plumbers, IT, all of these artisans that we say we need without fixing the classrooms. There can be no increase in doctors or engineers without fixing the classrooms. The teacher is the producer of any of the skills you need in society and many of the values you want citizens to have. They are the proverbial hern that lays all the golden eggs. The teachers are the hen. And if you don't take care of that proverbial hen that lays all the golden eggs, is it any surprise that the outcomes in society will not match what policymakers, economists, commentators, analysts say they desire? Let's think about a starting salary for a teacher. The starting salary for a teacher with a four-year degree in 2024 is 26,554. That's the take home. No, that's not the take home. That's your gross. The take home salary for a teacher who's starting right now with a four year degree is 18,000 rands, 386. 18,000. That's lower than the average monthly income. It's lower, right? I'm talking about the average monthly income in corporate South Africa. If you think about what happens as the career progresses, so because 26,000 uh, gross is not actually horrible as a starting salary, right? But after 10 years, because what happens is you start off at a particular notch, uh, salary notch, and the notch that you start off at is 164, and you go up one year, that you, uh, you go up in the notches by one every year. So after 10 years, you will be on salary notch uh, 174. How much will you be making after 10 years working in government? You will be making 27,840. That's your take home, um, not your take home, your gross monthly salary. And your take home after deductions will be 19,265 after working as a teacher for 10 years. I'm not including the bonus check or any of that. I'm just telling you monthly, this is what you're going to be taking. Now think about this. If there's a talented maths and science student in high school, grade 11, grade 12, maybe grade 10, who's picking a career, would he choose teaching or engineering or law or accounting based on monthly income? What would his parents or her parents advise her to do? If they're seeing their kid come home with distinctions, 90, 90, 90, 90, they're going to say, my daughter, I think you need to become an X, Y, Z. What are they going to pick in the X, Y, Z? Is teacher going to be one of the top ones? I don't think so. The income is just not attractive. Think about these young boys. These young boys want to be with slay queens, with yellow thighs and all of this stuff. Right? That's what they want. They want to be at Conquer. They want to wear labels. They want to wear sneakers. They want to have drip. They want to have all of this. How are they going to be able to do that on that kind of an income? They're not necessarily going to feel that they're going to be able to do that. Right? From a starting point, they may not even be attracted. But now, think about it if you've been doing it for 10 years. The career progression in engineering, in banking, in law over 10 years you get multiples of your starting income. So in 10 years, the teacher's salary has gone up by basically uh, 2,000 rands, gross salary. But for the engineer, it will have gone up by 300%. Which one are young people going to choose? 
Are we taking teachers seriously enough? Today, I want to talk about the TIMS and the scores that South Africa got in TIMS. Now, if you don't know what TIMS is, TIMS is an, is an assessment of the mathematics and science knowledge skills of grade four or five students and grade eight or nine students around the world. It stands for Trends in International Maths and Science Survey. Now, TIMS was developed by an international by the International Association for the Evaluation of Educational Achievement, the IEA, to allow participating nations to compare their learners' educational attainment within and across borders. The goal of TIMS is to help countries make informed decisions about how to improve teaching and learning in mathematics and science. In South Africa, the Human Sciences Research Council, with the support of the Department of Basic Education, has conducted this particular TIMS test since 1995, administering the test at the grade 8 or 9 levels in 95, 99, 2003, 2011, 2015, 2019. In 2015, South, Af South Africa participated in the TIMS numeracy at the grade 5 level, and in 2019, South Africa continued TIMS participation at the same level, testing both mathematics and science. So the results of the 2023 TIMS are out. And South Africa has scored very poorly, last in many of the instances. And these results show that there's an urgent need for intervention and an urgent need for more teachers and better teachers. But that question that I asked you, still remains. Now let's look at these results. I'm going to take you through them quickly. It's not going to take long. Don't panic. It's not going to take long, but I want you to understand how bad it is so that we can have a conversation or start thinking about what needs to be done. So there are four benchmark levels, all right, for maths. We're going to start with maths. There's an advanced benchmark, a high benchmark, an intermediate benchmark, low benchmark. So if you get Beyond that particular benchmark mark, you actually have those particular skills, right? Or competencies. So at an advanced level, students can select and relate information to implement appropriate operations to solve problems. This is in maths, advanced. At a high level, students can relate concepts or representations in extended contexts. At an intermediate, intermediate level, students demonstrate mathical, mathematical knowledge in simple situations and relate representations. At a low benchmark, students demonstrate basic mathematical understanding. Basic mathematical understanding. So where did South Africa score? Now that you have the, the, the benchmarks. Singapore scored the highest, right? The, the average score was 615. Then you have Hong Kong coming in at 594. South Africa comes in last for the grade fours at 362 as an average mark. 362 as an average mark. That's the grade fours. How did the grade eights do? The grade eights, Singapore came in as well. Number one, 605 for the grade eights. The score for South Africa, which wasn't last in the grade eight level, was 397. So the average score was below the low benchmark, but at 397, right? Beat Brazil, beat Morocco, beat Jordan. But there's one thing that you need to be aware of. In both of these tests, all of the other countries, except for Norway, are sending grade fours for, the, for their tests and grade eights. Only South Africa and Norway said send grade five and grade nine. So most of the other countries, you're testing a younger group of people, not an older group of people. So that's where South Africa scored in terms of maths. Where did they score in terms of science? Grade fours scored last, and the score was 308. Remember, the low benchmark is, this is the average score for all of the tested students, 308. South Africa scored last, grade fives participating in that science test. When it comes to the average science score for grade eights, which South Africa had grade nines, the score was 362, second last, beating Morocco out of the 44 countries that participated. 
So yeah, that's the status of achievement in terms of maths and in terms of science. Now let's have a conversation about why these grades are like this. It's a variety of issues, but the first one is that you have 13 million kids in public schools and 400,000 teachers teaching them. In some schools, teachers are teaching in, in grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, classes of 65, classes of 70. Of course, those kids are not going to do well on the benchmarks. They're not. They're not going to, the classes are overcrowded. There are not enough teachers teaching at the right level. The other side of the equation is that there's nothing to incentivize people to go into teaching so that you can deal with this teacher supply issue. They are saying that many of the teachers will have retired by 2035, the current teachers, because the average age of teachers in South Africa is a little bit older. Young people are not going into teaching. And why would they go into teaching? There's no prestige. There's no money. The, the social protections are low. The classrooms are rowdy. The Bella Act has just taken away teacher resources and tools to help them teach better and have and maintain discipline in the classroom. I don't think that you can solve the problems in education without changing the status of teachers, without giving more incentives for young people to go into education, without changing the resourcing in classrooms, around classrooms in South Africa. These grades are not good. And I sometimes worry that politicians don't speak enough about this. They will speak about electricity, they will speak about water, but they will not speak about the human capital that is being under-resourced and underutilized in South Africa as a result of miseducation. As a result of miseducation. It's a serious crisis. I don't know what you think about this topic, but I want to leave you with this question to ponder on. Are we treating teachers well enough in society? Or are we actually rubbishing them and not giving them the status that they need or the status that that profession needs to deal with the skills challenges that South Africa is facing? What do you think? Let's have a conversation. If you haven't seen some of my videos, I've got a video that I did yesterday on the issue of the um, visas to the Nigerians. So you can check that out. And there's other videos that I've put up. So there's lots of content that you can find on the page. Sometimes it won't show up on your algorithm. Just type there Mighty Jamie TV or MJ TV and you'll be able to get great content on the, on the YouTube page. Till the next one.